and I'm looking at my fuel gauge, and it's like this. My other three guys were low, but I was the worst. So I, we got the tanker, I turned him, plugged him. I, he said, I said, give me a thousand. Our normal offload was 4,000 or 4,500, that's pounds of fuel. So you can go down and go home. Give me a thousand, then my guys cycled in. They got their full offload, now my fuel gauge is back down here like this. I breathed a sigh of relief, they, they finished, now I came up for my full offload, plugged in, he pulled the boom and stowed it. This is one of those big tanker birds. And I said, hey, give me some fuel. <coughs> this pilot said, no, we're bingo, RTB, meaning he was low on his fuel, returning to base, RTB. I said, wait a minute. I'm going to have to bail out of this airplane in just a minute or two. Give me some fuel. No, nope, we're bingo. And I said, I knew from reading his um, you know, method of operation, he could fly from where we were over northern Laos all the way to the south of Thailand, turn left, and go to the Pacific, I mean, to, go to the Philippines, and loiter for 20 minutes. That was his bingo. And my fuel gauge was like this. So finally I said, okay. I got one sidewinder left. <laughs> I'm gonna drop back about 2,000 feet. And before I pull the ejection handle, I'm gonna pull the trigger, so put your parachutes on. Boy, that boom came down. <laughs> I plugged in, he started fueling me, my left engine quit. That's how low I was. I managed to hang on and get it started. He said, how much do you want? I said, fill it up. Which I didn't want because couldn't land with that much fuel. So I did a dirty trick, got my offload, I pulled right up in front of him about a thousand feet and hit the jettison switch. And got, got rid of half of that fuel. I said, you might need it. <laughs> this one okay? All right. Yeah, I, I got hold of the kid that night on the telephone and said, son, look, we're all in this together now. Just don't do that. We all help each other. Okay. Give me another leading question. Bolo? Bolo? Oh, everybody knows about Bolo, don't you? Okay, in the fall of 66, long about late November, the MiGs, the MiG aircraft started getting very, very aggressive. And um, so I had a chance to talk to my big boss, Mo Meyer, down at 7th. I said, sir, the MiGs are getting awful frisky, as you know. Uh, I have an idea of something we can do about it. He just grunted. And I thought, oh, well, end of that. But five days later, I'm in his office. He said, okay, what's your idea? I said, sir, I want to plan a mission where I'll take my F-4s up there and we look like 105s because the MiGs love to tangle with the 105s. So we plan and plan and plan and plan and pull this mission off on the 2nd of January. Now the F-4, if you may have noticed, not in afterburner but in full mill, leaves smoke trails. One factor. Two, a friend of mine named Donovan F. Smith in 7th Air Force said, Robin, I'm going to send you QRC 190s. Like you, what the hell is that? It's an ECM pod, a jamming e emitter against their SAM sites, which the, which the 105s had carried, but we never had. So there's, there's a bit of deception. And then Mother Nature got in the act. Morning. 
You. <laughs> Morning. Mother Nature got in the act and gave us a nice undercast so they couldn't see the smoke trails. So we did all this stuff, went down right over Fukien, nothing. Turned around just north of Hanoi, came back. My backseater says, I got one. Oops, went underneath. So I turned around and came back. Then here arrived my second flight. And the first transmission was, <laughs> A lead, you got to make 21 on your ass. <laughs> what a way to start a fight. But they all popped up through the, through the clouds. They thought we were 105s, but nuh uh. We were loaded for bear. And we, we got seven of them. Found out I heard a transmission of their, of their radio chatter. The lead says, 